Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Press Pass podcast. This is Ross Foreman. And let's first welcome, uh, where is he at here? Josh Matthews. Josh, how are you doing today? Maybe he's not. Josh. Josh, you can't, you can't do this uh, on mute. you got to unmute me. Josh Matthews, where are you? All right, we'll give Josh a minute or two here. He's texting me, so we'll uh, try to get him in on this. Hello? Hello, Josh. Hey, I was uh, trying to do some technical things. I'm sending you a note right now. So are we on the, uh, has Press Pass started? We have started. I've given you about a three-minute uh, introduction. Oh, well, I was on the other line. Tessa's in Mexico, and I had called her via WhatsApp, and I thought that I could link the calls together but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to do that. So, Ross, you're going to have to work behind the scenes while I uh, start press pass here and, and try to get her on. All righty. Well, we'll figure this out. Yeah. So, uh, in any event, while Ross uh, does that, and, and we can open up the line, Ross, here in a couple. Ross, Ross, Ross can you just, uh, like, do you have to actually do things while, like, questions are being asked? Like, how does that work? Uh, no, we'll, we'll, you, you get your uh, introductions going, and then we'll open up for some uh, questions for you. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Um, Memorial Day weekend coming here to the United States on Monday, so uh, most people will have the day off. I will continue to work, however. Um, so, let's see. we got Impact tomorrow night. Super excited for an all-new Impact Wrestling tomorrow night, uh, Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Pursuit, and of course the simulcast on Twitch. We've got two championship matches tomorrow night that I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing. I think that these are going to be uh, some great matches, some epic showdowns, some throwdowns, if you will. Let's run through what we're going to see tomorrow night uh, on Impact Wrestling. Sorry, I'm a little... Uh, uh, it's been a busy day. As Ross knows, I was uh, at, at, at kindergarten graduation um, all morning. But uh, so tonight, the record, that, was, that was not your graduation. No, I've already graduated. I, I graduated. Uh, summa cum laude, uh, as they say. Uh, Glenn Gilberti will be in action tonight. LAX versus the North. RVD and Tommy Dreamer. Sammy Callahan and Balaba. Ty Valkyrie and Madison Rain. Ace Austin, Dez, uh, Rohit Raju, and Petey Williams. And then uh, I mentioned the two championship matches. LAX versus the North for the World Tag Team titles, Madison Rain versus Ty Valkyrie for the Knockouts Championship. And because of that, uh, shopimpact.com is offering a Champions versus Challenger sale all day tomorrow. You guys can get 20% off of any of those Champions or Challengers merchandise that I listed. So if you... Uh, I've been on the fence about ordering uh, a North T-shirt. Uh, now you can say, you know what, it's 20% off. I'm, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to get my shirt tomorrow and save a little bit of money. And we're going to be doing these uh, sales and specials every Friday moving forward. Uh, some sort of sale that has to do with the broadcast of Impact Wrestling every Friday. Excited about that for sure, and that's a great way for you guys to save money and um, you know get the stuff that you want. And, uh, you know, be a part of Impact Wrestling and show your support. We uh, love all of our fans for doing just that each and every day. So that is uh, what's happening tomorrow night on the broadcast. And then, of course, you've got Impact, our live event dates, June 6th and 7th. That's Thursday and Friday at Melrose Ballroom in New York City. June 8th is a night you can't miss in Philly on Impact Plus. June 9th is Digital Destruction on Twitch. I saw the matchup graphics for A Night You Can't Miss today and uh, some great matches. And those are going to start rolling out probably as early as uh, tomorrow. You guys will get an idea of what the matches are going to be for A Night You Can't Miss. So remember when your uh, free 30-day subscription to um, 
Impact Plus is starting to run out, uh, you got to re resubscribe and and don't miss uh, and that you can't miss. And then July sixth, no fifth, July fifth is um, Bash of the Brewery in San Antonio. Uh, we're going to do uh, some cool things down there. That'll be on Impact Plus. Then July sixth with Booker T in Houston for uh, Deep Impact, a show I'm looking forward to for sure. I haven't seen Booker in a about a year, so it'll be nice to catch up with Book T and uh, that show. Everyone's looking for that show in Houston. And that, of course, takes us to the, um, the Doorstep to Slammiversary live Sunday, July 7th on pay-per-view. And uh, great news for Slammiversary, our new titanium package uh, sold out day one, 24 minutes of being on sale, both sold out. And then front row seats sold out uh, also day one. Uh, took about 15 minutes for those to sell out. So we're, you know, we're moving on now to, to the rest of the floor sections. Uh, general admission is moving well. So tickets for Slammiversary uh, moving well. Actually, all of uh, the three shows in Texas, uh, tickets are moving well for, for all of those shows, which is really cool. Um, I haven't been to Texas since I started working for Impact Wrestling. So um, it'll be nice to be uh, deep in the heart of Texas for some, for some great shows. So that's kind of our calendar uh, through July, through Slammiversary. Of course, then we have Windsor on the 19th and 20th. Uh, we've got some things in the works for August and September, some, some good specials. And um, so really just an exciting time for everybody here. And uh, we are looking forward to the summer. And with that said, Ross, uh, while we continue to figure out if we're going to get uh, Tessa on the line, I know she's in Mexico, she doesn't have, or she only has Wi-Fi, um, we can take some questions from the media. Ross is uh, frantically scrambling yep. to try to get Tess on the line. Just slightly frantically. But we'll open up uh, media, Star 6, to get in queue for uh, any star questions six. here for Josh. Yeah, Star 6. I'm just, I'm just being obnoxious. Shocking. No. Media, identify yourself yep. and your media outlet with any questions you have for Josh. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Josh, I'm sure uh, Riju is going to call in immediately with the most probing question you could possibly ever imagine. Are you ready? I can't wait. So, Josh, when are you coming to India? <laughs> hey, Riju, how are you, buddy? I'm great, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I mean, you know my thoughts. I love India. I love going over. I can't wait to come back. I don't... Uh, I don't know when we will. I, I'm I'm pretty confident that we will. Um, but but I, you 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 have to have a serious question for me this week. I do have a serious question for you. Now, so we, <laughs> so we saw Kevin Sullivan and uh, on Impact Wrestling as part of the whole uh, Undead Realm segment. Will he be a part of more segments going forward? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I think what you saw, it's funny when you said Kevin Sullivan originally, I thought you were talking about Kevin Sullivan, our uh, vice president of post-production. Um, and I was going to say, we didn't think Kevin. Uh, in any event, uh, I, I don't know, Reed. I mean, I think that, you know, anything's possible. I think that uh, uh, the taskmaster had a great experience. Uh, I know that he was treated very well, and, and he had a great night. And, and uh, you know, I think if the creative calls for him to be a part of a future show, I'm sure that he would jump at that opportunity. And how about Sabu, who was at United We Stand as well? Um, yes, I believe that um, you will see more of uh, Sabu on Impact Wrestling. I don't want to spoil anything, but I think that uh, that you'll definitely get to get to see him more if that's what you're looking for. Okay, thank you. Yeah, buddy. Josh, would you like to see Vice President Kevin Sullivan in the Undead Realm? Um, I mean, I would people would like. <laughs> oh, stop it. I love Kevin.
Hello, this is Carlos from Indie Pro Wrestling, IndiePW.com. And hey, um, how are you, buddy? Not pretty good on yourself? I'm good, thanks, man. So uh, I know that recently Conan on his podcast was talking about Impact pursuing like a different kind of uh, TV network deal. Is there any uh, confirmation that you can give us on that? I can't give you any confirmation. Um, I can tell you that uh, things are, are we're in an excited place right now um, with uh, with some things going on. But obviously, uh, you know, I can't get into any specific details about what's about what's happening. Um, but uh, you okay, know, I, uh, I, I I I'm excited. <laughs> well, we were excited too, and uh, Impact Wrestling has been doing pretty good. I just want to make sure that more people can get access to it. Yeah, and that's that's what we all want, and 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 we truly appreciate the support. And and you know, right now you can watch mostly. Uh, you know, you can see the show on Twitch. You know, wherever you are in the world, which is great. Um, but but you know, to, to, from what you just said to 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 everybody's ears, I mean, that's kind of the, the the goal and the idea. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, man. Josh, we're almost uh, getting ready for uh, New York. What do you What do you like to do in New York? Well, I'm a New Yorker, Ross, as you know. Uh, Hence I've the already question. been. <laughs> I've already been to Yankees uh, Yankee game uh, once this year. Uh, Scott, myself, and Eric Tompkins from our production team, uh, we went and saw the Yankees play the Tigers. Um, great opportunity to to just kind of hang out at Yankee Stadium and. Uh, in the Bronx there. I love going to games. I mean, it's New York. I, where every, you can just walk up and down, you know, up and down the street and have a good time in the city. You're from Chicago where it's, you know, you guys have two seasons, winter and July. Uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, en- enough of the seasons in Chicago. Let's get right to it. Uh, one of the greatest knockouts of all time. Clearly, my absolute favorite. Let's welcome Tessa Blanchard. Tessa, are you there? I am here. Oh, thanks for being uh, uh, on time for your for your own press uh, conference pa- press pass. Hey, Josh, is this? I good? think we discussed this. No, no, no. I think we discussed it. That anything that goes wrong is always Ross's fault. A hundred percent, and and I was joking with you. Obviously, Ross uh, has now dropped the ball for the umpteenth time this week. How many times? Uh, umpteenth. It means like a whole lot of times that you've dropped. Does that have anything to do with me being a baseball umpire? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yes, umpteenth. Ross, Ross I, I think I think you're breaking up, Ross. Could it be because you have an Android? <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I get, a, I get a tag team from both of you two on this. <laughs> so uh, well, how, are, how are things going for you, Tessa? Yeah. Uh, things are good. I'm in Mexico right now. Um, just woke up a little bit ago. I'm going to do this press conference and then go to the gym and enjoy the jungles of Mexico. <laughs> no, wait. You just woke up. It's, it's like one thirty Central Time. No, it's like 11 o'clock here. Oh, okay, well, still, you, you're just waking up? Josh has been working since oh, yeah. 4 in the morning. No, oh, sometimes I got I to gotta sleep in a little bit. That's right. That's where I am. All right. I've been going, going, going nonstop for like the past week. I had 10 matches last week, Ross. 10. Wow. I will say that's very impressive. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess we should ask you first off, reflect back on Rebellion, if you would, please. All right. Hello? Yeah, it, could you could you please reflect on your Rebellion match against Gail Kim? Oh, yeah, Rebellion was amazing. There was a lot of uh, anticipation leading up to that event, um, it was really cool to have my dad there and then have Gail's husband ringside and a match that I never thought would really happen, I guess. Or it's not that I never thought it would happen. I just, I guess I just never, it was always a dream match, but I never thought it would be reality. And um, 
I don't know. That was a real, a real cool, cool moment for my career. It's kind of one of those moments that you know you're going to remember forever. A pivotal moment. Alrighty. Well, media will open up for some questions here for Tessa as she's enjoying the the sun in Mexico. But uh, certainly, always has time for media questions. Star Six, if you'd like to get in queue for Tessa, please identify yourself and your media outlet. Hi, Tessa. Mike Danka from Windy City Slam here. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Um, I saw you in Chicago just a couple of weeks ago at Warrior Wrestling where you won the uh, first ever Warrior Wrestling Women's Championship against Jordan Grace. Now, talk to me a little bit about your experiences in Chicago. Uh, it goes back to even last year where you were in the four-way match at All In. Uh, talk a little bit about your match with Jordan and talk about Chicago a little bit. Um, I always love working in Chicago. I started my career in some of my matches there at uh, Shimmer. And I go there quite frequently, I believe. Um, but I don't know. I, I love it there. All In was such a such a cool event. Um, again, like Rebellion, it's one of those moments that I'm going to remember forever. Um but yeah, and, and then my match against Jordan Grace, that was a that was a cool one. Um I always enjoy sharing the ring with her because she's a hard hitter like me. Uh she goes out there and leaves everything in the ring. Uh Jordan's a great talent. Um so that was cool to have have that match in Chicago as well. Um but yeah, that's that's awesome that you gotta be there and see it live. Yeah, now, what was it like to be in the ring with Molly Holly? She was the special guest referee for that match. Oh, that was so cool. I'm such a fan of Molly Holly. Um, I, quite, I think I think a little bit in my in the back of my mind, I was like, I'd really love to take the Molly go round right now. <laughs> um, but the, <laughs> it was really cool to share the share the ring with both of them. Molly, even in the locker room, someone that I respect greatly, and she always helps the newer talent she's always uh giving us her experiences and advice to us based on her own experiences um so it was really cool to just talk with her and share the locker room with her as well now Tessa, everybody knows your family's lineage um with Polly, with magnum uh at what point i mean what, what, were you always destined to be in the business i mean at what age did you know like yeah this is what i'm going to be doing uh i think that the moment that I stepped in the ring about six years ago at High Spots with George Sal. Um, the first bump I took, the first time I started hitting the ropes, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I love this. Um, which it might sound a little cliche, but I, I felt like I I found something where I fit and, and something I loved. So I stuck with it and I traveled and I traveled and I've told the story before, but uh, I just did everything that I could to be around wrestling, set up the ring, set up chairs, travel the miles, drive for 14 hours to upstate New York, and then drive 14 hours right back without a hotel and make 50 to 75 bucks just because I could be around wrestling, and I loved it. I Very still cool. love it. Quick, one, really quick, one more little thing before I let you go. Um, what is your um, future with Impact Wrestling? Uh, what are some of your more immediate goals? What are one more time? Uh, what are some more of your uh, uh, goals coming up in Impact Wrestling? Uh, some of my goals are I want to go. I want to do everything. I want to make history in my own way, in a way that other girls in the industry haven't done. I feel like women all over are making history right now, um, but I want to do it a different way than anybody else. So whatever that means with impact, whether that means going after the knockout title again, whether that means um, changing up the type of matches that I'm having, no matter what it may be, I I want to make history in a different way, and I have a strong feeling that that's about to happen. Thank you so much, Tessa. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Hey, Tessa. This is Riju from Sportskira in India. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I loved your match against Joey Ryan at United We Stand. Uh, what the, what 
how do you, how much do you like an intergender kind of setting and are there other men that you'd like to face from impact um like i said i i um i love wrestling so much against guys against girls no matter what it may be um i'm not really sure what's what's in store for me or if, if I, I think I'd like to face everyone on the Impact roster. Impact roster is so talented right now. It's loaded full of um, amazing performers. Uh, so it would be an honor to share the ring with any of them. So that being said, what do you think of Glenn Gilberti competing with the knockouts? Um, I quite frankly think that Glenn is a piece of shit. Um <laughs> I think for him to come down the entranceway and insert himself into the knockout battle royal last week um, just made a statement even more clear that he is a piece of shit. For him to come out and get on the microphone and downplay each and every one of us women as talents is just embarrassing because everything that he said couldn't be further from the truth. And granted, I feel like any single one of us women in that ring, contracted or not, could have beat his ass. Um, so you know what, if if the time and place is right, I'd be more than glad to get in the ring with him and show okay, him and what kind of piece of shit he really is. And how naturally does being a babyface come to you? After, because you're a natural heel, uh, in my opinion. I think I'm a little bit confused on the question. <laughs> okay. you mean, what do you mean by being a baby face? What does that mean? Uh, you have been nicer than usual uh, recently. I don't think I'm, I'm. I don't think I'm being nicer in any way. I think that I'm just being myself. Maybe I've maybe my match with Gail Kim uh, opened my mind a little bit and helped me help me to understand some things better, to change my outlook or my view on certain things, but I don't think that I'm being nicer, I'm just being myself. And finally, uh, with, okay, so you're not being nicer, but do you have any regrets about tra uh, trashing Gail Kim's restaurant? I, I don't have regrets on anything. I don't live life based on regrets. Everything that I do, I do for a reason, and I had my reasons at that point. Um, Gail had disrespected me at that time and it all came down to the ring we got in the ring everything came down to that match and the both of us all the bullshit aside both of us just fighting it out in the ring and that's what we did and I have a new respect for Gail because of that thank you so much for your time but Tessa obviously I always think you're uh, you're super nice but uh, that said, we're going to go to a question that came in uh, via YouTube from Bass Fuzz. He would like to know, how much can Tessa squat? How much can I what? How much can you squat in the gym? Oh, squat. I thought you said squack. I was like, what? Um, I guess it depends, right? I haven't been squatting a lot lately. I've been... Uh, Resting my leg just has been crazy, crazy, crazy. But the most I've ever squatted is 235 pounds. But I will say that in my match against Brian Cage, I did lift him, and he's a good, what, 275 pounds? So let's go with that number. I like that better. All right. What, uh, what's your number one uh, routine in the gym? What, what's your favorite thing to do in the gym? Not cardio. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I like to do everything. I like lifting. Um, yesterday we did shoulders. Today I'm going to do some back. Tomorrow legs. Uh, I try to work out twice a day. So that's been my routine this past week. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, though. Well, that'll, that'll actually lead to our question from uh, Joseph Napolitano via Facebook. He just wants to know, we wondered about, you, about your workout, which we've touched on, but we'd also like to know, what does your diet entail? Oh, gosh, I just started my diet again. Um, last week, it was awesome because it was like cheesecake, and I had a milkshake, and just had anything that I wanted. I was super happy, and I loved it. I got to be fat for a week. Um, but this week, it's back to dieting, so I wake up, I have my egg whites, my oats, my protein, my vitamins, 
I try to eat five to six times a day. It's chicken or steak or fish and rice and tortillas and anything clean. Should we go to the next caller here? Hello, this is uh, Carlos from Indie Pro Wrestling, IndiePW.com. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. So, um, is there any plans of maybe bringing in uh, Daga to Impact Wrestling? Who knows? I would love that. I think, I think he's so underrated, and I think that he is a phenomenal talent. Um, he's already proven that all over Mexico. Um, it would be a cool thing for the people of the United States to see that as well. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Uh, now, what do you think of, like, women's wrestling evolving into, like, X Division style caliber matches? Or do you like more of what's seen in the mainstream? Um, I, I, I love intergender wrestling. I think that there's a way to do it. I think that um, like any type of wrestling, there's a it, it's preference. A lot of people write it off in the get so because they see man and woman. But I think that there's a way to tell that story, and I think that there's um, a way for it to come off properly. And uh, that's something that I really enjoy is having intergender matches and changing people's opinion of them. Um, yeah. So who knows? I think that that would be a cool thing uh, to get into and to hopefully change people's opinions as well. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think right now, a any company, right now the women wrestlers are like definitely sipping up their game, and it's a good positivity, you know, good change. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, Tessa Gilkuda Jr. here from Turnbuckle Topics. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I just wanted to ask, I've seen a lot of social media writers, whatever term you want to use, say that the knockouts division is the best division in wrestling today. And I think you are certainly the spearhead of that among all the other girls. So I, I just want to ask, what's, what's the women's locker room's temperature on being compared to the best in the industry today? Um, I think that something that's really cool about the Impact Locker Room is we're not competing with anybody else. We simply just offer an alternative, um, which is really neat. Um, I think that the women's locker room specifically is so talented. We don't have any weak links. Everyone brings something different to the table, each and every one of the women, even if they're on TV in a, a current storyline or not. Um, from Alicia Edwards to Sue Young to Rosemary to Kira Hogan to Jordan Grace, Taya to Madison Rain, um, and the list goes on. Even Scarlett, but everyone brings something different, and we don't have any weak links, which is a really neat thing. Yeah, and just to, to, to follow up on that, I, I know you always have the Knockouts Championship in your sights. So I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what Taya Valkyrie might be in store for. That is, if she's champion the next time but you go after it. Um, after Rebellion, I kind of had a... I have a new outlook on things a little bit. My main goal right now is I want to make history in a different way than anyone else has ever done. I want to make history and carry on my family's legacy, but also forge my own at the same time in a different way than anyone else is currently doing or has ever done. And... That's my main focus right now. All right, Tessa. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Hey, Tessa. Lee Sanders with Wrestling Soup. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Thank you. Honored to talk to you. I have a question for you. You know, we saw a really solid cross-branding relationship with you and Kira Hogan as part of Impact Wrestling. 
with the Wild Women of Wrestling promotion. Can you speak a bit on the relationship between Impact and Wow, and how it's helped you all on the roster and the companies themselves? Um, I think a really cool thing about Impact is they allowed me and other talents to go and work with WOW. You're going to see a few new faces. Um, Diamante from LAX will be joining the WOW roster. Alicia Edwards will be joining the WOW roster under um, their WOW superhero names. And it's a cool thing because it allows, it doesn't limit us as talent. It allows us to go out and experience different things. And just, we love wrestling. And Impact doesn't try to hold us back from that. They, they allow us to go and to love wrestling and to do wrestling. And um, that's something that's invaluable to each and every one of us. Awesome. Awesome. And I got one other question for you. What do you think personally it will take, be it creatively or just maybe outside of the box to have intergender wrestling be taken seriously? Because I know that's really been having a lot of, wrestling fans talking up a storm within at least the last three years? Um, like I said, I love intergender wrestling because I think that there's a way to do it. I think that there's a way to tell that story, and I think that a lot of the times uh, it's not done correctly. Just like there's different types of wrestling that are done incorrectly. Maybe you like it and maybe you don't like it. Maybe you like a certain style. Maybe you don't. It's all up to preference. Um, like I said, with intergender wrestling, I think that there's a way to do it, um, which is why I enjoy it. I remember my match with Joey Ryan at United We Stand, and afterwards, Santino came up to us, and he said, look, I, I don't really care for intergender wrestling, but now I get it. He said that that changed my opinion of it. And that was something really cool to me, because every time that we go in that ring, that's that's something that Joey and Candace were trying to do is change people's opinion because they knew how to do it and to tell that story. And now that Candace isn't free to go and have those matches all over right now, um, and, and she's still killing it, but, but I kind of feel like I've been able to step up and have that, have that spot with intergender wrestling all over. And I've been able to have those matches. Um, so if we were able to, uh, have that on a bigger platform, hell, I, I would love it. Awesome, awesome. Well, here's to the future for that. Thanks for your time, Tess. I appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to go to a question here from Richard Atkinson, who would like to know, who do you look up to the most and why? Just in wrestling or in general? Let's get a two-part answer for that. <laughs> um, I look up to, it, it might sound biased a little bit but my dad and my stepdad as well because uh, they're very very knowledgeable and they they pour into my, my business life and my personal life to such a great extent um, and that's helped me since the beginning of my wrestling career it helped me become the athlete the woman that I am today um, they, they just they they care and they're very detail oriented and they help me so much. Um, as far as wrestling, I really look up to uh, Natalia, um, Natalia and Mickey James. Both of them. I remember when I was first starting wrestling and Mickey James was on a Maryland Championship Wrestling show with me, and she I was walking through the mall like the next week, right after the show that we were on together, and she called me when I was at the mall. And she spent an hour and a half on the phone with me while I was inside of, like, a Dillard's or something, just helping me with my entrance and with, like, character things, um, which I thought was, like, the coolest thing in the world. Um, and Natalia as well, she's a fellow third-generation woman, uh, which is very rare to have a third-generation woman in wrestling. There's not many of us. Um, so her and I have been able to relate on some things, and she offers advice whenever I need it, which is a really neat thing. And I think that she's – her career has been – absolutely amazing and something that me or any woman should look up to. We'll follow that up with a question that came in from Ishan Kacker, kind of a sort of a follow-up to the, what you were just saying. He, he'd like to know, what advice did your dad give you before the match with Gail? What did he say to you after the match with Gail? Man, people want to know all the secrets. People want to know 
all the inside info. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I won't give everything away, but my, my dad, he's very supportive, and he just lets me know that he's proud of me, and he wants me to be the best that I can be inside the ring, but also outside the ring as well. Um, you know, wrestling, this whole wrestling career and wrestling lifestyle, it can't last forever. Um, and I'm not going to pretend that it can, but um, while I am in, in the business and while this is my career, I want to be the best that I can, and I want to make history in my way, like I said before. And one thing is my dad and my stepdad, they're, they're both very, very supportive of me, and they're proud of me, and they let me know that every chance that they can. Yeah, Tessa, Jim Barcelona with Miami Herald. Just wondering, you had 10 matches last week. How do you keep from not burning out? Um, if I'm being real with you, just like 100% real, last week was really difficult for me. It was a very trying week uh, mentally and physically. Um, I had to, I, we had impact tapings, and then I had to travel to... Chicago for Warrior Wrestling and uh, Iowa for Pro Wrestling Revolver. And then right after that, I had to catch a flight to L.A., so all the way across the country to make it to uh, L.A. for WOW tapings, which we had for three days straight. And then the day after WOW tapings, I had to drive straight down to Tijuana, cross over to Mexico, and I flew straight to AAA. So we had AAA for two days then. So it was just like, go, 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 go. Um, and there's, I think that a lot of people don't, don't see those things. They see like, uh, in, in, all, in a lot of different companies too, they see people wrestle on TV, but then they don't see the travel and the work and the, the house shows that go into it. They just see the people on TV and, um, you know, it's not, I'm not going to say that I'm special or anything, but it's a hard schedule and, uh, to keep up with your workouts and your diet on top of it, um, Hell, I've had a hard time just keeping up with my phone, my messages, and my t- talking to my family and everything. It's it's difficult. It's a hard thing to do, and to I think it's important to just try to find a balance. So I'm kind of in the midst of working that out right now. Is it something too when you're working with different companies of a challenge to be something? different per se I know you are you but when you're wrestling if you're wrestling in different countries is it different wrestling in Mexico than the United States is it different being wrestling for a while and compared to impact wrestling are there nuances that you have to go through wrestling for all these different companies and in these different countries um I I think that the style is completely different in any country that I go to um but that's one thing that's really cool is when I started wrestling, I said that I wanted to be one of the most versatile women in wrestling. I wanted to be able to wrestle anyone and have a great match. I wanted to be be able to wrestle any style and have a great match. And so whether it's in Mexico or Japan or Australia or the U.K. or America, um, I want to be able to adapt and to have those great matches. And I feel like uh, maybe the past two years I've really been able to come into my own and I can finally say that I think that I can do that. Um, Mexico is a little bit different for me, and I feel like I'm finally starting to uh, have those great matches here too. Um, and as I work with AAA, it's cool because I can I can uh, wrestle talents that I've never shared the ring with before. Um, someone that I really enjoy wrestling here is Bobby Apache. I think that she's really good. Um, but it is it's it's different. And then with Wow and Impact. Um, those are both uh, more American style because it's TV in America. Um, so my style as Tessa Blanchard doesn't change too much. I'm still myself, although uh, my opponents change. Um, and so maybe that does change up my style a little bit. Yeah, and lastly, I get two-parter a little bit here, but were you the stunt double for Paige's character in Fighting With My Family? Yes, I was. What was that experience like, and is doing more of that and even acting something in the future for you? And thank you. Um, well, for wrestling, 
modeling. I always wanted to be an actress. I did musical theater all through middle school and high school. Um, when I was younger, my parents put me in the Charlotte Children's Theater in North Carolina, um, and I would take the train downtown every Tuesday and Thursday night with my friends, and we would go to our acting classes, um, and I loved it. That's what I always wanted to do before wrestling. Uh, so maybe, maybe acting, I don't know. Uh, it, it's something that I would never turn down. I, I just love it. Um, I think that it's fun. Um, and it, it helps me have kind of an outlet outside of wrestling as well so that my whole life isn't just wrestling all the time. Um, it's cool to have that, that balance outside as well. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting over this cold still, so I'm a little raspy. Um, uh but I, I don't know. I um, I love wrestling. I love what I'm what I'm doing now. I think that the movie was a cool experience because uh, I had never done anything like that before. It was cool to be on a movie set and, and to meet Stephen Merchant and Kevin Misher and Dwayne the Rock Johnson and work with uh, Thea Trinidad and Zelina Vega, um, which her and I had become close friends on the set and. I got to work in L.A. and live there for, like, three months and then go to the U.K. and stay there for an extended period of time working on this movie. And it, it was a really, really cool experience, an invaluable experience, um, to say the least. All righty, Tessa. Well, with that, we will wrap it up for this week. I know it's been a a whirlwind for you, and uh, I will confess, because uh, for the record, Tessa only said she would do this podcast with us if I made a confession and admitted that, yes, uh, I was called out once by Ortiz to do 50 push-ups. Ortiz did 50, I did 51, and I, I didn't think Tessa could do them. Tessa, congratulations, you did amazing on 50 push-ups in a row in high heels. If you, if yes, I did. Yes, Ross is talking shit to me right now about, about push-ups. Tell him I did 52. You did 52, Ross. Come on, dog. I thought you were on my side. Nope. Ross, how are you going to be in your side when you don't like <laughs> put me over with my... It was like 51 or it yeah. was like something, but you say like because I... I counted in Spanish. Ross didn't even go all the way down for the push up. Yeah, what about that? Well, I'm going to say, if people want to see it, it was on Around the Ring with Josh. and I think Ross, to make it even, needs to put on some high heels and do 52 push ups. I think so. And count them in Spanish. <laughs> Spanish, please. <laughs> Only for you, Daga. But, uh, yeah, congratulations. I said I would. The, the only way you would agree come on this call would be as if I uh, confessed that yes, you did 50 push-ups in a row in high heels. Amazing job. I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ross, thank you. D Daga, thank you for chiming in there. And Tessa, of course, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, safe travels. Uh, enjoy Mexico. Media, we will talk to you next week. Unmuted. Q&A session is over. Goodbye.